There you go, nice shiny new tyre ready to go on. Wheels completely cleaned up. The sprocket carrier all cleaned out. Uh, cleaned all the bearings out and everything. They're all pretty good. Giving all this a good old clean up. That's nice and all nice and clean and shiny, all ready to go back on. Spindles all cleaned up. All nice and lovely the chain which is sitting inside plastic bag all completely cleaned up I just uh, soaked it in WD-40 and then some engine oil so it's all ready to go back on all the split links and everything are there good little technique actually for getting these uh, can't see the split link there it is good little technique for getting these on and off well off anyway using a sharp flat blade screwdriver but I have encountered a little problem let me show you so this has been off once already because I've also given this all a good clean out this seems to happen every single time I change the chain and sprockets now I'm not changing the chain and sprockets because the sprocket is in very good condition the chain's fine. There you go, look, I've cleaned all that out. It's just a collection pot. Uh, I've cleaned all that out, but we've got a bit of a wiggle going on there. So nothing wrong with the sprocket, something wrong with the bolt. There you go, can you see that? It's pretty clear, isn't it? That bolt's been twisted. So it's it's thinned out in that sort of uh, centre portion there, which means it elongated. So the reason why that sprocket was wiggling is because this wouldn't go all the way in. That uh, goes into the output shaft and seats at the bottom, but if the bolt stretches, then then it won't, the flange won't seat all the way against the sprocket and you'll get that little telltale wiggle. And the bolt, you can see stretched because it's clearly over the years being taken on and off, twisted. Uh, so where it's gone thin there, we've got longer. And I've actually ground the end off and it is now exactly the same length as the new one. Almost, I've ground quite a bit off. Um, which means it will seat properly, but there's no way I'm using that. When you look at the quality of the new bolt, you can see the difference, can't you, in the uh, the actual thread. Really don't want to put that one back in. So, courtesy of Wiimoto, uh, it arrived quickly enough. But it was about five or six quid, about eight pounds with postage and packaging. But it's OEM, it's a Honda original. I do not want to skimp on something like a front sprocket bolt. So there, there's times, there's the right time for aftermarket and the right time for second hand original and definitely the right time for brand new OEM. It's in gear, so that's holding it. But uh, that needs 55 newton meters, so I'll um, do that with the torque wrench when we got the back wheel back on and the chain on. So I'm just going to slip the back wheel in and give the uh, spindle a good old grease up. Um, wheels all nice and clean, all spotless inside and out. 
um, I've cleaned up the, um, uh, the swing arms and all that kind of stuff and the adjusters so it's all good to go back together Great caliper on and it is mountains. Out comes the troll hammer. <laughs> you you gotta get it through the, the hub and the, the spacer, then the uh, brake caliper mount and then the swing arm again, so it's quite difficult to line up. There you go, it's hit a, uh, You kind of do it by eye once you get to the other side, ish. <laughs> Sorted. Anyway, I'm just going to feed this back on. Um, good thing is you haven't got all the nonsense of uh, riveting links because you've got the split link, which is nice and easy to get on and off you just need a pair of pliers to snap it over so i'm just going to whip that on and then i'm going to uh, line the wheel up and then we are done um well apart from tightening it all up of course there you go chains on and um so i just need to align the wheel and torque up the front sprocket get the cover on once i've torqued all that up and so on and um, so that, that needs 55 newton meters. I'll just I'll use a torque wrench on it. And um, obviously there they've not been undone, so that's all fine. So it's just the rear spindle bolt, which I think is about 100 newton meters or something like that. I will check. But I wanted to show you. Um, so the beauty of these split links, as you can see there, look. Um, there you go. You see, there's no riveting or anything like that. You just you just push them through and then you stick the, the plate on and then you push the clip on, which is dead easy and getting it off is dead easy and it means you can get your chain off and give it a proper clean like I did with this, a proper scrub and brush up and soak in oil, which was great. And it's a heavy duty ringless chain and it's got no tight spots and I would definitely buy one again. Anyway, let's go and clip that uh, link back on. Slot that on. Clip on there. And it should. It says should. <laughs> uh, might need to choose my pliers. Straight on, look. Now, don't use pliers to get them off because you'll spend forever and a day at it just a flat blade screwdriver on the end of the clip just on the end of the clip you might need to put it in gear give it a sharp tap and that will spring straight off dead easy right yeah not the easiest thing in the world getting the wheel aligned and uh, all that kind of malarkey but it's all long and clean so just need to chuck that back on and she's all good to go this little old lady sorted for a while there you go nice new tyre took the chain off give it a good clean oiled all back on and completely degunked the uh, sprocket carrier and all the bearings and everything down there so it's all lovely and clean 
And more importantly, when I took this sprocket cover off, I found that the bolt was just in a real sorry state. And you can see really well there that it's just twisted. And uh, so that thin portion in the middle is where it's twisted. Um, and that wouldn't take long before it just sheared, I don't think. So um, having spotted that, I just went and bought a brand new OEM part uh, because I'm not taking any risks. And I think that was contributing to the fact that the um, sprocket was wobbling a little bit because clearly that bolt had elongated in twisting and then one wasn't seating properly. So, uh, yeah, replaced that not a moment too soon, I think. So, yeah, happy about that. There was about seven or eight quid for that bolt, but um, I could have got a, I could have got a cheap aftermarket one, but it's a sprocket bolt. You need the right thing. So, uh, just in terms of strength of material, so I thought OEM, the only way to go with that one. So, there you go. You have to pay the uh, top dollar to get the quality parts, don't you, really? So, anyway, um, that's all back on, torque back up. That's, I think, 55 newton metres on there. So, um, obviously, check your own service manual if it's a different bike, but uh, all done. Just need to get out and have a play now, don't we? Thanks for watching.